Okay, in this video we're going to look at the hollow alkane. So, alkane chain where the halogen stuck on it. So we'll start with a quick recap, just how to actually name them. So I'm just going to chuck straight in with compounds which have got actual branches and multiple halogens because if you can follow the rules for this you should be able to apply it to anything fairly straightforward. So longest carbon chain, one, two, three, four, so but. Since there is no double bonds or anything, in. Now look for where we've got any branches. So we've got branches on one and on the second. So we've got a, a two methyl there. So as you can see there, the methyl sticking off on it. We've also got some halogens here. So on carbons one, carbons two. Now they are both bromine, so bromo. Thing to remember if there is two of them, die. You will lose marks if you forget that. So if there's two bromines, die. If there's three, try. If there's four, tetra, you'll never really see above that. So one, two, because on carbons one and carbon two, there is a bromine. That's telling me there's two bromines, one stuck on one, one stuck on two. On the second carbon, there is a methyl. And then the longest carbon chain, four, and the ain tells me it's all single bonds in there. Now some actual factors of them. So solubility. mess if I just do that now in terms of this bond we've got a difference in electronegativity between the carbon and the halogen so I've used bromine as an example but it would apply to all of them so the halogen is more electronegative than the carbon it's pulling on the electrons in that covalent bond more so it's pulling them more towards the halogen So the halogen will have a delta negative, the carbon will have a delta positive. Notice delta, partial charge. It has not taken the electrons fully from them. Since we've got these charges, then you might be thinking it could dissolve. It will, but only a tiny amount. Because the only interaction which this haloalkane can offer to water is going to be a dipole-dipole bond. So we've got a dipole here. Obviously the water has got a dipole as well. But if water interacts with itself, it can form hydrogen bonds instead. Hydrogen bonds, strongest of the intermolecular forces, hence water would prefer to interact with itself rather than with our little compound here. So doesn't really dissolve, fairly poor solubility. In terms of boiling point, rules which you apply to the actual alkanes, almost exactly the same here. So if we increase the length of our carbon chain, our boiling point will go up. Reason why, if you imagine more carbons, then you're gonna have more electrons or a bigger MR. If you've got a bigger MR, then there will be more van der Waals. So between, say, this and another compound of it, then bigger van der Waals, more energy required to break the bonds, thus higher boiling point. Similar if we increase the actual halogen size. So if I change the bromine to iodine, then the iodine, bigger MR, more electrons, more van der Waals, so the boiling point will be bigger. And similar, if you actually increase the branching,
then the boiling point will go down because you will be lowering the actual contact areas. So similar before, if things are flatly packed together nice and well, so there is lots of contact area between them, so lots of van der Waals interaction, whereas if you've got a branch, not as much surface area can touch, so weaker van der Waals interaction. So the boiling point thing is similar to the actual alkanes. The hollow alkanes will tend to be slightly, well have a slightly higher boiling point than something of a similar length. Because if you imagine ethane, so two CH3s, then the MR of that is going to be less than our one bromoethane here. Because the bromine, much bigger than hydrogen, so bigger van der Waals. Now, some of the reactions of the haloalkanes. So this is where you need to get the hang of actually being able to do your mechanisms. Now I've picked the most reactive haloalkane that you'll use typically if they had astatine, it would be more reactive than this. The reason why it's more reactive, as we've just said, then there is some dipoles which exist. You might be thinking fluorine would be the most reactive because yes, fluorine would have the bigger electronegativity difference, but the carbon-fluorine bond is the strongest. With this bond being quite weak, it is the thing which needs to break. So the iodine one would break very easily, hence it is the most reactive. Reason why is carbon fluorine, because they're both very small, you can imagine them having a strong grip. Whereas iodine, big, weak, then electrons far apart from the nucleus, so the bond breaks quite easily. So the carbon fluorine one is a bit of a tease, if you will. It will drag in the nuclear files by having a big delta positive here, but then doesn't put out, doesn't break. So with this, the first type of reaction, what we'll look at is nucleophilic substitution. So we've got our haloalkane. It's going to attract a nucleophile. The three common ones you'll see are the hydroxide ion, the cyanide ion, and ammonia. So I'm going to do the reaction with one of these because ammonia is a little bit odd compared to the other two. Notice the way around I'm writing them, it's a bit odd than what you've normally seen. Reason why is I'm just trying to make it a bit easier to show that it is where the lone pairs are and they're going to be the ones doing the actual attacking. So when you're doing your mechanisms, make sure to show the lone pairs. So, a nuclear file, it is something which is classed as an electron pair donor. So the electron pairs here, these are going to be donated to the carbon. Reason why? Negative charge on the electrons, delta positive on that carbon because of the polar bond here. So these nuclear files are going to be attracted to that carbon. Now the nucleophilic substitution favours primary haloalkanes. So by primary haloalkanes, notice we've only got one carbon join directly to the carbon which has the halogen. So one carbon primary. But have two secondary, three tertiary. Reason why is these hydrogens very small, they don't hinder the nuclear file getting in. So there is lots of room nuclear file can actually get to that carbon. So where to start it? Start your arrow at the electrons. You always start where the electrons are and finish where they are going to. So we are starting here and we are going to attack the carbon. 
Now, I use a double-headed arrow. The double-headed arrow means two electrons. If you use a single-headed arrow, it will be wrong. So make sure it is nice and clear double-headed. Now, obviously, carbon cannot have five bonds if the hydroxide ion sticks on there. So the weakest bond needs to break. Now, the weakest bond in this case is the carbon iodine one. So the electrons in here will leave and the bond will break as such. So the product what you will get So notice there the conservation of charge negative here negative there so negative one on each side and you can see where the the actual name for the mechanism is coming from the nuclear file here is substituting for the halogen it is replacing it hence nucleophilic substitution so it'll be exactly the same if i use the cyanide one instead just quickly edit it to show you So again, start at the lone pair, you attack the carbon, halogen leaves, and then the nuclear file sticks on the end. So the reason this is useful is because, as you can see, we can get quite a varying different amount of functional groups across here. Any nuclear file, stick it on so we can make alcohols, nitriles here, or we can make the amines if I stick the ammonia on. Now, so we'll just do the ammonia because, as I said, this one was a little bit odd. So, lone pair on the nitrogen attacks the carbon. Now notice, since it was neutral across here, if I've got I minus there, then obviously there must be a positive charge to cancel that out. Hence why it's on the nitrogen, because nitrogen typically should only have three bonds. It's got four here. In the... Get that a bit odd. No, no, it's right. In the AQA syllabus, what they show you is a further step on from this, where there will be conditions which cause the actual hydrogen on this to be taken off so it's where there's concentrated ammonia so a concentrated amount of this and under a high pressure typically if those conditions weren't met this next step wouldn't occur but just assume them you don't need to understand the reasons behind it So another ammonia will come in and will take this hydrogen. The hydrogen will leave its electrons to remove the charge on that nitrogen. So what you end up with eventually so we've got our primary amine here And the NH4 plus because that NH3 is going to take a H plus from there and your iodide ion floating about so these two would sort of form a, a salt afterwards so that's nucleophilic substitution so the main one what you'll see will be the hydroxide one if in an exam question you are given sort of KOH potassium hydroxide sodium hydroxide do not do that right it needs to be dissolved in ionic solution you can just ignore the potassium or the sodium altogether 
It is the hydroxide ion which will act as the nucleophile and do the attacking. If you start reading into organic mechanisms a bit further, then that was an SN2 reaction, by the way. But you don't sort of need to go into the SN1, SN2 just yet. So the other main type of reaction which you will look at similar to that is the elimination. So this is an E2 reaction, what we're going to look at not the E1, but again, a bit further on, just refer to it as elimination. Now the elimination one is favoured for tertiary haloalkanes. So notice one, two, three carbons join directly to the carbon which has the halogen. So primary favours substitution, tertiary favours elimination. Now in elimination the hydroxide ion does not act as a nucleophile, it acts as a base. So a base it accepts hydrogen ions. So. To show that, our, our base here attacks the hydrogen, accepts a hydrogen ion. Since the hydrogen ion is going to leave, it leaves its electrons. So those electrons can now swing round to form a double bond there, because carbon wants four bonds, otherwise it would only have three. Now because this carbon can only have four, the double bond forms it'll have five, the weakest bond will break. Hence, as a product, we get that. We get an alkene in this case. So you will always form a double bond in the elimination reaction. You are eliminating the hydrogen and the halide, well, the halogen as a halide from the actual compound. So the reason why the tertiary favours the elimination is because it cannot behave as a nucleophile and get to that carbon. There is too much crowding around there. In terms of the solvent, you do this one in heat and, well, can condition is heat and you use an ethanol solvent. For the previous one it tends to be an ethanol water mix. So I'll stop there, I'll do the actual free radical stuff on a new video because phones vibrating over there, I'm about to run out of time.